Hey there, Profex version 4.3.4 was just released and I want to give you a very quick overview of the new features. There was a severe bug in the previous version. You could not use certain functions unless you would activate the scan. For example, if you wanted to run peak detection, uh, nothing would happen unless you would activate the scan and run it on the active scan. This is fixed now. We can now run peak detection without activating the scan. And the same goes for um, generic curve fits and search match. Then another new feature is in the preferences dialog. We can now apply the preferences uh, changes without closing the dialog. For example, we can show the grid lines. So we see the changes without closing the dialog each time. We can also activate more than one scan now. So if we click on the scan in the plot options, it will be highlighted and filled. And if we hold the control key and select another scan, we can now highlight multiple scans at once. And last but not least, there is a new tool. It's called the waterfall plot dialog from the tools menu. It can be used to display graphs in a very different manner. We can add a scan file. And you can see on the x-axis we still have the diffraction angle, but the intensities are shown in different grayscales. So uh, low intensity is black and high intensity is white. And if we align this with the plot we can see in the background, you can see that peaks appear white and the background appears black. And we can use this dialog to display several graphs at a time. So if we add some more, you can see they are drawn as a stack of scans and you can see how they change their intensities. In the appearance tab, we can change the appearance a bit. Instead of using a grayscale, we can choose some color scale, like this, or false colors from blue to red. And there's always a, a second variant of the color. Most of them are reddish, and we can change from the warm appearance to the cold appearance, then they get bluish, just a different representation. And on the, on the grayscale, what this does is it changes from a positive to a negative representation. In the positive one, the intensities are white and background is black. And if we change to cold, it's the opposite. Background is white and intensity is black, so it looks like a negative film. And we can also change the scaling of the intensities. Right now it's linear. We can change it to a square root scaling, so the uh, low intensities are amplified a bit more, so we can see better what's going on in the low intensities. Or even more so, if we change to logarithmic scaling, now we can actually see a lot what's going on. If we change to one of the other color scales, now we, we can really see what is happening in the diffraction pattern, how this group of peaks gets less and less intense, and disappears up here, and we have another set of peaks, another phase that appears, is not present here, and then gets stronger and stronger. We can change some more appearance settings. For example, we can change the, the range of the intensity scale. Right now it starts at zero. If we increase this, we can clip and start at an intensity of, let's say, 50, like this. So the, the contrast of this image is changed, same for the upper end. And then we can also change the interpolation to smooth. Now what happens here? Now the values between the actual scans are interpolated smoothly. Here without this we have a sharp transition from one scan to the next one. If we activate smooth interpolation, we get a smooth appearance. It just looks a lot nicer than the bands, the sharp transitions here. 
but you have to keep in mind that there's a lot of interpolated data that was not actually measured. It's just interpolated between two scans. And we can also show a grid. It shows some grid lines at uh, certain angles, just for orientation, so you can better follow the shifting of peaks. And it also shows horizontal lines at the positions where the measured scan is drawn. If we activate smooth interpolation, anything between this line and this line is interpolated, and the actual scan data is drawn exactly at this line and at this line and here. Then we can save the graph either as an image, a pixel image in PNG format, or as an SVG file, including all the scales and labels. And if we move the cursor around on the picture, we can see the coordinates down here. It shows us on which scan we are, and it shows the diffraction angle, the horizontal position of the cursor. There is a third tab, it's called Monitor Directory. We can specify a certain directory on the hard disk, and then we can instruct the dialog to monitor this for uh, new files and update the graph as soon as a new file is saved, for example, by our instrument. So I can set the, which file format it should monitor in which directory, and then I can start monitor. Now nothing happens because the directory is empty, but I can now pretend that scan data is generated once a second. So now my script copies a new file into this directory every second, and you can see how this dialog monitors the content of this directory and updates the scan. So we can watch it in real time. There are some more bug fixes, uh, smaller stuff. You can find it on the What's New page on the Profex website. If you need help with upgrading from a previous version to the new version, Check out the video for the new features in version 4.3.3. It shows the upgrade path on all three platforms on Windows, Mac and Linux. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the new version and I hope to see you for the next video. Bye bye.